the form and mind also you cannot comprehend, you cannot understand. That means you cannot understand who are you, what are you. This form and mind is not what you think, like the Buddha said. This one go the way of nature, dependent originating, condition arising, cause of phenomena, not a permanent and changing entity. It's not you. That's why don't be foolish, don't be deluded, don't grasp, don't cling, don't hold. That's why in the first noble truth, find a summary, the Buddha summarized in short. It is your self-delusion, sakadity, that condition you to grasp onto these five aggregates of form and mind, the grasping aggregate that I call dukkha. So this is very clear. When you grasp and cling onto this, it constitutes sakadity. That's why you will have the three evil rules. You will become selfish, you will become greedy, where you think this is you. The egoic mind will arise, the personality will arise. Then when things don't go your way, you get angry, emotional. Uh, you create all the negativity of thought process. Then when you don't understand, there is fear, there is insecurity, there is doubt, there is restlessness of mind. This is how the three evil roots manifest. And from the three evil root, it conditions suffering. Where well, these are evil root, root of all evil, make you evil, bring about karmic downfall, bring about suffering and misery. So all this are negative tendency, negative vibration and energy field. That's why you have to develop virtue, love, compassion, gratitude, understanding, kindness, sincerity. Uh, all this is to reverse the evil. We are all these virtuous thought, kind thought, metta and all those things. They are devoid of the evil roots. That's why you have to cultivate right thought, leading to right speech, right action and right livelihood. And to do that, you need wisdom, you need right view, right understanding. That's why the Dhamma must awaken in you the initial wisdom, the Yoniso Manasikara. So that part is very good. So you see, this J. Krishnamurti quote is very important. Yeah? So according to J. Krishnamurti, he said, you can sit in the right posture with your back perfectly straight, breathing correctly, doing pranayana. Pranayana is anapanasati, yeah? uh, means using the breath as your meditation object. And all the rest of it, these are very common uh, cultivation that the Hindu, they do during the time of the Buddha. For the next 10,000 years, but you will still be nowhere near perceiving truth. Why? Because you have not understood yourself. Who are you? What are you? You lack mindfulness. You lack awareness. You are not able to understand the way you think, the way you live life. You have not ended sorrow, suffering, misery. You still have fear, worry, anxiety, sorrow and lamentation. And yet, you want to find enlightenment. That is the thought, actually developing the craving, the desire to become enlightened. But you don't know what enlightenment is. You don't know what wisdom is. Wisdom arise from self-knowledge. Self-knowledge to realize that the form and mind is not you. To awaken to its universal characteristic. To insight into phenomena, the two aspects of the five years of form and mind. So all this is what the teaching is all about. That's why you look at J. Krishnamurti quote, you will come to know both he and the Buddha. They are both very wise. He didn't use any of the word the Buddha used. And yet, he explained the truth so clearly and so simple within just seven or nine. So this is for people who already have the understanding. They read, very meaningful. But he has not cultivated. You don't have the Dhamma. You cannot understand him. As I say, he don't teach you how to develop the understanding to understand all this. Okay, Krishnamurti, he himself has seen, understood all those things. 
but he cannot teach you how to realize that. Yeah. It's just like the Buddha's advice. You have to walk the path yourself and realize and awaken yourself. He only give you the teaching, the Dhamma. He only show you the way. Buddha merely show the way. Like the Buddhist hymn, we also must walk the path. Buddha merely show the way. So this is the meaning. He can only tell you that this is not the way to actually realize enlightenment, to understand yourself. You need the silent mind, the awareness, the mindfulness to have this ability. So his code is very beautiful. That's why he said, 10,000 years or so, you're wasting your time. But I always say you can go in and out or retreat. Train yourself, make yourself very calm, very peaceful, and have fantastic meditation. All the so called jhana, jhana, how to say. Then when you come out, you are back to square one. <laughs> because the moment you come back into society and life, you become heedless again. You can't even manage your thought process. You can't even be aware of what is going on. You cannot see how you stir and become what you are, your own self-delusion, your conditioning. That's why inability to understand your own form and mind will actually condition you into delusion, negativity, and you can never awaken to the truth. That's why the meditation to realize the truth is not easy, not straightforward, not what people think. You have to go beyond thought, beyond mind. That's why the Dhamma is akaliko, timeless, beyond thought, beyond mind, sandhitiko. So all this, the Buddha already clearly spelled out, explained, and people cannot understand. That's why they didn't really understand the deep meaning of the Dhamma. What is the Dhamma? Salutation to the Dhamma. Swakato Bhagavata Dhammo. Then what is this Dhammo? Well expounded is the Dhamma by the Buddha. What is this Dhamma? The Buddha said this Dhamma is sandhitiko, can be realized in the here and the now. No need to wait till you die. Then this one is akaliko. This Dhamma is the timeless. Beyond thought, beyond time. That's why if you use the instrument of thought, which is thought based, to meditate and try to hope for enlightenment, you are being foolish. You are being deluded. Because how can the thought realize a state that is beyond thought, beyond mind? It can't. That's why you have to silence your mind to awaken. Then apart from Sanditiko Akaliko, he said you can investigate on this Dhamma, Ehi Pasiko. He invite you to come and investigate. You will stand up to the truth, where yeah, this is the truth. So the Dhamma has this few very beautiful characteristic. He said it is Sanditiko Akaliko, Ehi Pasiko, that Opanaiko, leading inward into your nature. Hmm. Then it is Pachetang Veditabo, Vinohiti can only be realized by the wise one, each for themselves. Because if you are not the awakened one, the wise one, you cannot understand the Dhamma. That's why this Dhamma is very, very beautiful, very profound. It's not thought, it's not knowledge. Hmm.